Hello, good day, and welcome back to so part four in our Anglo JS um, chapter six here. And so, I hope you guys are enjoying learning about Angular JS. And today, we're going to continue with a deeper dive into Angular JS, looking at how you can do more with controllers and some a few new directives. All right, and the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to develop an application. So this is going to be a full kind of usable app, first full usable application. It's not a very complicated application. It's not going to win any awards anywhere, but it's going to be a simple to do application. But you'll see a number of features in AngularJS that's going to allow us to make this very easy. And so, so far, we've seen the ng app directive, ng model, ng if, ng repeat, and of course, ng controller. And we're going to be looking at a few more. We're going to look at ng show, ng hide, ng click, and ng disabled. So, what is an event handler? So we set it out the control play this rather important role in orchestrating thing between the view and the model. So the controller, for example, we've seen so far, get some data and present, give it to the, the view um, to be um, you know presented to the user. And we said that oh, well in Angular, technically what you have is a template, and Angular combined the template and the model to render a view. But the idea is still the same that you know the control prepares a model for the view. Well, one of the other things you also said about controlling our first definition of a controller is that it handles the interaction of the user. And we said optionally there's not a user. But the idea being that you know, a user can click a button to show more data, they can click a button to remove data, can click a button to submit data, or they might move their mouse to a certain location on the screen and you might want to display something. And so we're going to be seeing today how we're going to write event handlers. Now, there are basically two sources of event handlers as far as we're concerned. Events that are generated by the user or by actions by the user uh, that do arise from direct action of the user and events that are generated by the system. And we've seen in the previous example events that are sort of generated by the system. Well, if you look here on line 16, we're saying, uh, Angular, I want you to call my event handler, which is this anonymous function, every second. So every time Angular generates this event every second, we give it a function that it should call and then we take some action. What we're going to be looking at now is how we can write handlers for user-defined actions. So this would be if a user clicks a button or something like that. And we're going to do this by looking at our to-do application. Now, um, in our application, like I said before, caveat, fair warning, it's a simple application, a very simple application, but I think it demonstrates a lot of things that we're going to be able to build on. And so our requirements for our application is to be able to display a list of tasks to be accomplished in our to-do list or shopping list, whatever. And we want to be able, of course, to not just display some static list that can change. That wouldn't be very useful. What we want to be able to do is add to the list. And of course, if we can add one item or one task, we can remove or add multiple. And of course, we want to be able to remove things that we may not want or any mistake we've made when we added an item. So let's just jump right in and start looking at how we're going to build up our to-do application in stages, okay? Step by step. So we want a to-do application, and basically what we want is something where we can type in some tasks to be done, or maybe we want to do a grocery list, for example, if we go and shop in, you can imagine. And um, we want to be able to say, like, I want to get bread, and I want to remember to do that, and I want to click the Add button, and have it added to my list of stuff that I already have. If I don't have anything in the list, well, create a new list and start adding stuff to it. Now, this doesn't quite work, but at least we have an idea of what we, we want. We just have to have some functionality, but this is kind of like what we, we want. So how do I get to this? Well, um, this is the application here running. And the only thing I've changed is from like my application in the previous video and from my controller to main controller. So this is to do application my controller, and it matches up here, right? If you remember, we have to use um, the same name, the string here, as we use there. And in terms of the application, I create my, my Angular module here, the application and module, remember, we're going to use that interchangeably. Um, this name must match up. So there's the only two difference. Um, the other thing are pretty straightforward. I have a scope on my function. Um, again, it doesn't matter what this function name is because this is what is important, right? So I, I left that just as 
to again drive home this idea okay I could have made this anonymous function and I'm gonna start doing that in future videos so you can get accustomed to it anyway so let's just stay focused on what we have here and so I have this list and I initialize it it's a, an array so I have scoped that list which is a property and I'm gonna have an, this scope object and uh, it's gonna be an array and I already have milk and sugar and then I have scope that title and it's gonna be bread now here on my form in the HTML the template what I do I have a form nothing new this is all the way back from HTML where we started um, I have input and I just type text and the model is title which matches up with this remember the controller is um, available here so angle is going to look up the value for this model um, variable here title and see it in this controller um, main controller which is defined here which is this and look up and get bread for this text box and hence why you see bread there and then um, here we have a button that doesn't do anything we didn't attach any kind of action to this button and so we here we said list equals to you know and just print out the variable again the, the model variable list and so that's what we have here all right pretty straightforward stuff all right so we want to be able to to click this button and have what we have in this text box be added to the list so let's see how that's done so the only change i've made here is i've added this new angular directive called ng click and just look how easy that is i say ng click and i give it a function to execute basically we're saying angular when i click this button call this function and angular is going to do all the magic of wiring this up just like it did all the magic of wiring this up for us and so where does this function come from well when we use ng model it looks up the uh, model variable here in the controller so you can imagine that when we use ng click and we call a function well it's going to look that up in the model in the controller also so this is how you define it i mean this is just an attribute of that scope variable just like title is an attribute add item it is an attribute it just happened to be a function so there we go scope that add item is equals to an anonymous function and this is the anonymous function here and we're saying scope that list which refers to this that push if you remember from when we talk about um, JavaScript in chapter 5 and we talk about um, arrays how you can push things off of them pop things off of them splice them and so on to remove things you can please go back and review those videos if you forget and so now um, we're gonna push into this array you know scope that title which happens to be whatever this value is going to be we have access to it so it's going to push it onto this array and since we've added whatever is here already here um, we should empty that title clear it out so the user is going to type something else and so this is the only change we have really had it here this function and then make sure that our angle and that how we want it to be called this function to be called when we click this button and so let's go see let's refresh and let's click this button and bam there is our bread being added and we can have um, cola and we click the button again and it's added okay so look how easy that is like you know our stuff is getting pretty functional here um, of course if you add the button again an empty string is added that's because we add we initialize that to an empty string and now when we add uh, click add again of course that adds an empty string so that doesn't look too good so um, we should definitely fix something like that and one of the ways we can do that is for our handler here this is a user generated event by the way so the user click the button and the handler we setting as this function and we can say is if the scope is not uh, you know if it's somehow empty so only if it's some valid value that's not empty or null or something um, so it's sort of like a test, like a true test, like if scope is kind of true to you, remember what I said? Um, you know, here it just means that it has a value uh, instead of being like empty, which is considered to be kind of like a false, just as if you had null. And so it's not a very strict test. But if it's not null or it's not empty, then is the only time we want to push something. So we just wrap those two statements in an if statement. And now 
if we refresh and we add this and then we click to add look at what happens but of course if I type here cola and I click add it adds it and so that's getting a little better right so that's nice we're making some progress so um, is there anything else we can do what about the UI why don't we make it obvious to the user that an invalid value when clicked wouldn't be added okay here it's not that obvious okay why don't we make that a little bit obvious so one of the things we can do is add ng show here to our input or button input and so now we can say only show the button if this title model variable again is kind of true it's an evaluates an expression and the expression here m to be the, the value of this variable and um, this um, model value variable here evaluate it and if the value is true-ish then you can show the input if it's not don't show it so uh, let's go take a look and see what that looks like and so there this val there's a value so click oh and then oh it's it's gone right because I want you wanted to show if this is some has a value so as I start typing it comes back but uh, look at that it's kind of disappeared this might be a little bit jarring to the user by the way this ng hide okay which is the opposite of show so this is saying I want to hide if this is kind of true which is not what we want so let's refresh and since there's a value there of course it's hiding it because it says hide if there's a value and of course when we remove this then it does the opposite which is not hide it so that's not what we want so uh, let's undo undo that well again we notice how this is a little bit jarring to the user right uh, we have a value there and then you have a button there and it's kind of gone uh, let's see if we can do something more subtle with the same result now by the way when we use ng show we really need to do the test anymore because since if there's an invalid value here like there there wouldn't be any button to for them the user to generate an event therefore our handler will never be called so we didn't have to do the test right so we got rid of the test so now here let's do something more subtle and with the same result and so we're going to change it from an ng show to ng disabled and the test is still the same what we're saying is um, well the test so it should be the different is disable the button if right uh, disable this button if there, this thing is not true if there's nothing there then disable the button so if this is not if this is not truty then disable the button that's the test you want to do instead of disable the button if this is true so yeah so I had a bug there so let's kind of go and see what the effect of this and so there is our button and we click this and notice now our button is disabled and you can't see it maybe you hear it and I'm not lying to you I'm actually trying to click this and it doesn't click and I could say soda and you could see it's got enabled as soon as I type a value um, something there All right and click that and so you get the same result but to me this is a bit nicer it's a little bit more subtle and you get the same result okay and this you know the other one with the if test it stayed enabled and the user has no indication that that's an invalid input but here it's kind of you know they can they can tend to see um, we of course we can add messages to tell them that the input is not valid and we're gonna see how to do more things with forms okay so so that's that's looking kind of good so, so that's nice but um, what about if we kind of want um, our term to do remember there's supposed to be a to-do list and there's certainly a list there but what if we wanted to be able to do things like say that oh you know this is not just um, just a shopping list maybe we have to run some errands right we we know we have to pick up milk and uh, you know we, yeah, we might want to pick up milk but we might also want to um, yeah I, I, I messed that up some refresh uh, we may also want to um, stop at the school right and we might also want to stop at the gym right and so on so this is more like some tasks to do as was a shopping list and you might want to be able to check these things off right maybe you want to use this during your work day to you know keep track of the things you have to do during the day email Bob call Tom send out um, party invitation yada 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 and so you might want to be able to have a status associated with this maybe whether it's just a true 
a Boolean value that says whether it's done or not done, or something more elaborate that says, you know, um, it's not been started yet, it's started and maybe uh, completed. And so that's what I've done here. The only thing I've really changed is I introduced this variable um, called to do item, and it's an object, it's an, an initialized to an empty object. And then that object, I set some properties on it, and one of the properties is title. I set the value to um, the title that we're going to be trying to create. Remember, this is inside of this add function, um, add item event handler, which is only going to be called when a user types something valid because we have this ng diff variable here, okay? Um, and then I have added another attribute called status, and by default, any new to do item we've added, we're going to set out the default value is that it's not started. Of course, later on, we're going to add things so that you can change it to started and completed, if you like. And now, instead of me just pushing, you know, scope that title, I push this object instead, right? So, so that's really the only change, okay? And I push this object instead onto my array. And of course, I, I, have to, I empty the title text box. So let's see how things look now when we have this. Oh, the other thing I did was I emptied the list. Um, you know, we're going to start off with the empty list unlike before. Um, and so, um, okay, and I need to change this because uh, this is incorrect. Bam. Um, so refresh. And so, yeah, I have a red there. I look at that. So I have this object. So I have an array of objects. And in this case, it's just one object in there. It's title, status, not started. And let's do um, pick up milk. And I click add. And so there you can see I have added another object to this array. And I could keep going, right? Um, so what would be nice is if we could kind of display this in a much better way now that I'm dealing with objects instead of just simple text and you know just going across the page horizontally anyway when I was adding um, things even when it was just a simple list of strings. So uh, what do you think might be able to display this much nicer? nicer? Well, um, I'm not going to wait around to because I know you know. Um, a table. So let's use a table to di display this information. And so I have a table border one. I have header, title, status, which comes from our object, and some action that you could perform. Now, if you remember from our requirements for this to-do application is that we must be able to display a list of tasks or to-dos, which we have demonstrated we are able to do. You must be able to add um, a task, which we have demonstrated we can do, and we must be able to remove one, which we haven't done yet. So we're going to do that now. So here's our, um, our table. And so how do you render each line at a table? Well, we reuse the ng repeat that we saw before. We say ng repeat item in list. So we know we're going to use the list and we iterate over it each object in that list. And we're going to say call each one of them an item. And then we're going to create a new row. And we're going to say, well, the first thing is item that title, then item that status. Then in the third column, we're going to have a um, you know, hyperlink tag, there's the A tag. It doesn't point to anything because when you click on it, we're not navigating to like another page or something as we, we did when we learned about this tag back in, you know, chapter two or three or wherever we, uh, we did um, HTML, probably chapter three. Um, and so ng click, here's our ng click again. So ng click is smart enough to work with buttons or even with this attribute, because that's something you can click. Basically, anything you can click, you can type ng click. You could use ng click, and it knows how to wire up to it. And so we're saying, now when I click this button, um, this hyperlink, I want you to call the remove item function. Now, what do I want to remove? Well, unlike add, where we're just going to reference the value that's in the text field here and create a new object, I need to know which one to remove, right? Because for each one, I'm going to have this x, that you can click. And so Angular is really clever and gives you some really nice things. I mean, look how easy we've been able to, what we've been able to do so far. So one of the things you get with ng repeat is every time it iterates over and creates one of these row before each one of the items in the list, it is keeping track of the index of that item in the array. Remember when you have an array, you have the index, which is zero base. 
So the very first thing is going to be at index 0, the very next thing can be at index 1, and so on. And so for that index, we can ask Angular for what is the index for this current item, and I'll pass that to this function. So essentially, essentially Angular is going to generate HTML where this remove method, remove item method call will have the value 0, 1, blah, blah, blah. So if we actually exam examine it or investigate it inside the browser after it's generated, we'll see those things. And maybe we'll see if we can look at that without this video getting too long. Or in another video, we'll take a look at it. And so that's all really I did was I changed the, you know, from this pre uh, list here to you now this table and because I was doing all the other stuff before um, here, I didn't change anything here. And I, of course, I had to add my remove item method um, function and my event handler. And so I take the index because that's being passed in here. I could have called this any value I like. I didn't give this any name I want because this is in terms of my function. I just make sure need to make sure that this is dollar sign index because that's what Angular uses. But inside my function here, my handler, my phone, which is handler is a function. I said index, and then remember when we did talk about array and how you add things to them and remove them. We talked about push and pop and slice, and on shift. Well, here you go. I splice off at that index one item because I only want to remove one thing, and I don't want to put anything else on it, so I don't put anything else here. And again, we replace. Uh, we really don't need to do anything here because we're. We're not messing with the text box anyway, so um, that's unnecessary. I, I, that's what happens when you copy and paste. <laughs> I just copy and paste and modify it. And so let's refresh and see how this looks. So click there, and there you see bread not started. I could click X to remove it. I can do bread again. I can do milk. I can do sugar. Soda. And here I want to remove the milk, and there we go. I can remove something at the end, like soda. I can remove something at the beginning, like bread. Right. So um, as you can see, this is this is really decent. For just a few line of code, we can do something like this. I mean, of course, we can style it, and and this is by far very simple, and it's the sim the emphasis on simple to do application. But it is an application. It's usable. And if you wanted to, and you know how to, you can actually share the link to this application and you can have other users use it. Now, we haven't covered out, you can do things like that, and it's pretty involved, but, you know, it is an application and it can be used, okay? Um, of course, we, don't, we didn't save the data in some persistent format, so every time you refresh it, you know, it starts over and it loses the data, but that's a different story. Um, at least here we've demonstrated we've been able to use our controller and some um, and directive from Angular to write a simple to do application. And I guarantee you that if you try to do this with jQuery or um, something else or just straight up HTML and JavaScript, and we're still doing HTML and JavaScript, it's just that we're using this framework that's taking care of some of the heavy lifting for us. And that's what we said a framework does, right? It does some of the heavy lifting for, for you. All right. Now, um, let's wrap up so this doesn't go on too long. I didn't want this to be too long a video. But I hope um, you're impressed and you're continually being impressed and, you, you know, just looking at the examples that we were able to create so quickly and what we can do with Angular. Okay, so this ended up being just as long as the previous video, but, you know, we did develop an application in my defense. Um, so um, I hope you really find this... Um, illustrative and you've learned something thanks again for dropping by and if you aren't you're not subscribed yet please subscribe and spread the word and see you in the next video take care bye